We actually yeah. got to play the 100 class. Speak for yourself, I was in the so audience. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I was having a terrible time. The crazy yeah, most of them came, came from the boys. Yeah. Yeah. We were just along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. We were living in there. Yeah. Yeah. First things first, congratulations on Pistol. It's wicked, absolutely wicked. Um, now it's such an epic retelling of an iconic group. What were your initial thoughts, Louis, on like when you first read the script? Ooh, when I first read the script, I remember being amazed by how much music was actually in the script. I'd never read a script with so many references to songs. And like I remember making a playlist immediately, just adding them all. And I hadn't heard of quite a, quite a lot of them. So I was just like, he's really thought about this in terms of, well obviously he's thought about it, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, but he's really sort of plotted this out. This is like a, yeah, so I was, I was amazed by that. I remember your playlist. Do you? That was brilliant, yeah. <laughs> he made a really good playlist. No, because in fairness, I hadn't heard of the Velvet, well, I'd heard of them, but I hadn't heard them. And that's a bit of a crime, I realise now. But Danny just set me off with all of these tunes. Um, so I've got, yeah. I think I was in the top like 0.01% of Velvet Underground listeners on Spotify last year. <laughs> I remember I was quite proud of that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, you just wait till you get your Spotify wrapped, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> Were you guys fans of the band beforehand? Well, I knew of the Sex Pistols. Uh, my, my daddy was a punk in the 70s, um, despite right. being a policeman. I was good at pogoing. Um, <laughs> that. Uh, le less the gobbing, more the pogo. <laughs> it seemed chaotic as well. Watching it, I think like that's the vibe that you get. You, you feel like you're there in the action with them. Um, and so with that chaoticness that goes on, was it fun to just absolutely let loose and embrace that craziness? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, it didn't yeah, feel yeah, like definitely. work at all, did it? No, at times. <laughs> yeah. Organised Chaos was def definitely the title of this project. And we didn't realise it until afterwards when Danny was talking about it, but that's what he wanted. So he'll love it that you felt like that, that you're in and amongst the chaos. Yeah. And all the yeah. gigs that you see in the show, we actually perform them all live. And that's what the band camp was for. There's no pre-recording, no post-editing. That's really us as a band. Because mm. Danny wanted to feel all the chaotic lumps and bumps yeah. of live performance. So um, we had so much fun doing that. Yeah. I mean, the boys did mention that there was like some absolute craziness on some days on set. Um, was there anything that was like stood out for you? If you can drop them in it, that'll be amazing. I was gonna say, the, the crazy yeah, most of them <laughs> came, came from the boys. Yeah. Yeah. We were just along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. We were living in there. Well. <laughs> yeah, really, honestly. Yeah. I think Danny created a great space to to really let the boys run wild in a way. They really embraced, they really embraced the chaos, but it brought an energy and a, a, a lightness to it as well. Um, it was just hilarious watching those boys get up to so many things. And we were we were rehearsing and, and spent a lot of our time in a, in a committed building that was going to be torn down <laughs> after we vacated. So we were allowed to go wild in that sense as well. So the boys were climbing the scaffolding and, and the walls graffitiing well. the yeah. walls, kicking holes in the walls, yeah. just going, just gen wrestling each other. Yeah. Indoor snowball fights. Yeah. yeah. Fruit lots throwing. Of, lots of hard work. Fruit throwing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Getting lots into of hard work on set, innit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was there anything that was like, oh, I think we've just stepped, we've stepped a bit too far there? Like, was there anything that happened like that? Probably, Probably things yeah. we can't talk goes. about. Yeah. You'll have to ask other people who are involved that aren't us. Yeah. And, uh, and then they'll right. be like, yeah, 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 definitely, you know. Um, yeah, ask the others I who are in we the fine. audience. We were, we were fine, we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. We did break into the rehearsal studio after work, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did yeah. that once. Yeah, it was fun. We definitely broke a few things. Yeah. A few tables and chairs. Around. We were just so excited to play, so we'd come in at, you know, 10 o'clock at night and break into our rehearsal studio and jam for a few hours. Yeah. Which we can talk about now, because we didn't, you know, nothing, too much. Nobody died. Yeah, yeah so nobody died. Was critically injured. Yeah. So. Was there any like scenes that stand out for you that, you know, somebody that's about to go watch this is like, oh yeah, you should really keep an eye out for this. Like, was there something so like nostalgic and just amazing to film? I love being on the barge. So we, we, we took a boat down the River Thames past the Houses of Parliament when the boys, you know, played. And that was, I mean, such a good day out. It was, you know, something you'd never get to do. We recreated the Sex Pistols gig from the Jubilee, and it was so much fun. I reckon the 100 Club I was shows. thinking the 100 Club, yeah. Yeah, those were great. Any of the gigs, the 100 Club mm. was especially one that was really special. I was able to get my sister to come over um, and visit, and we punked her out, and she was, she was in there as well, sweating up a storm with all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We actually yeah. got to play the 100 Club. Speak for yourself, I was in the so audience. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I was having a terrible time. Oh yeah. The music was great though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, it must have been boiling. It was it was pretty bad, I'll be honest. Yeah. Two floors yeah. down, no ventilation. Yeah, I was just because we were just pogoing the whole time. And obviously Sid, I have to jump the highest. And I was just like literally trying to bounce higher than everyone. 
And I had this like, I felt terrible. I had that, that bracelet thing with spikes on. I can't remember what you call it. Um, oh, like a belt? Was, yeah, this yeah. poor bloke next to me. I looked at his arm and it was just red. And like red and, oh, it was terrible purple. Because we'd just been jumping and sweating so much. And they, yeah. yeah, it was. It was a lot, but again, the music was phenomenal. Ah, oh, <laughs> Louis, Louis yeah, it really was. There's a fiddle now as well from all that. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cars just yeah. four. Playing the Hammersmith Rock Odeon, that was cool as well. That the Hammersmith was cool. Apollo, we that did Winterland there. Was With Louis. Louis was on the stage for that one. Oh, yes. Luckily, because that was a chaotic audience. That, yeah. Speaking about things going wrong, that was sort of we had the, the scope for us to do what we wanted was massive. So they just sort of set us off. We had about a five-minute take. We had to play the end of one song and then a whole song. Um, and basically anything could happen yeah. in that time. Um, and so, God, yeah, it was a lot of people nightmare. fell over that one. A lot of they? people yeah. throwing water on stage, so we were slipping everywhere. <laughs> yeah, people doing um, like stage invades and stuff, yeah. and, like going arse over tit. Like, That's right. Bang, we weren't down. told when people were going to get up on stage. So <laughs> people great. had been spoken to, and they would literally hop up and try and, like, I don't know. Like, I was the only one sitting down. down. <laughs> so, I'm on the drum, so I was just watching it just all, all, all happen and trying to kind of keep a straight face. Crazy. Yeah. The clothes, the style, it, uh, throughout the whole series, it's, in, it's iconic and incredible, but did you like wearing them or were they not your style? They were kind of your style or? I mean, I loved wearing them because you're just transforming yourself completely and makes you feel like the character, but yeah, I never want to see another pair of fishnet tights. <laughs> <laughs> I and thought Sydney looked great in the rubber, personally. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun dress, hard to get into, harder to get out of. But I got lucky most of the time, you know, I was in my, my boots and jeans, which was great. And then big sidestep to the big rubber dress. <laughs> Tallulah, we do need to talk about Vivian. I mean, she's like su such a creative and, and talented designer. Did you love stepping into that role? I really did. Yeah, it's, I mean, she is, she's an icon in her own right. Um, and it's funny, you know, Vivian Westwood as we know her now, like I had no idea of her genesis. So it was it was fun to kind of go and go and do the, the Vivian Westwood origin story and see her on the, the King's Road in, in the seventies in, in sex boutique and yeah, it was it was amazing. How was that the process of, of stepping into those characters? For me, I, I really found we had so much archival evidence and uh, archival footage and the production had so much research for us. So I just sunk my teeth into that. And then I was able to meet with Chrissy quite a few times, um, which was really <laughs> scary at first. <laughs> like, hello, you know, I'm playing you. Never met you before. Um, but she was so generous with um, with sharing stories and memories and I learned a lot from her um, both for work and personally too so that was that was a big big plus yeah unfortunately I obviously couldn't meet with anyone but there are about three interviews with Nancy on YouTube so I just watched them on a loop until I went a bit mad <laughs> um, because I you know she had a different physicality to me different voice so it was kind of nailing those things down that really helped me get into the character and then just the words on the page that Craig had written um, kind of did the work, really. Jacob, was it? did it feel like pressure? Yeah, definitely, and I think for me, it, it was my first thing, and um, I, I've been a fan of, of the Pistols since I was like 14, so there was certainly a bit of, okay, we gotta get this one right, you know? And um, But I think a bit of pressure is good, you know, it, it, it kind of helps people reach their goals, I think, you know, and if we didn't have you know, and we were lucky enough to have some of the pistols actually involved and they could kind of you know, give us a bit of a nudge in the right sort of direction if we needed it, you know. How important was it for you to get that right and reflect what it was like for them? I think we felt a big responsibility to get it right because yeah. we all be became genuine fans of this band. Mm. Like, I think now we, we should probably go on Mastermind as a group and, and answer questions <laughs> about the Sex Pistols. I reckon we'd win the big cash prize because <laughs> we spent three months doing a band camp and um, fall in love with this band, to be honest. And Jacob, well, Jacob was already in love with them anyway. So uh, from a point of view of genuine fans, we just really wanted to do them the justice we all thought they deserved. Oh, yeah. And having, as you say, Jacob, having met so many people that were there, you realise that these were real guys. They're not just like, these, are, these were real, genuine people um, and sort of in, in living memory. So and we had one chance to get it right, basically. And the, the, the care that Danny handled it with, it was like, we, we have to get, get this right. Fingers crossed we did. Yeah, God. Let's <laughs> hope. Yeah. yeah, man. Definitely so, definitely so. You mentioned about this band camp. What, what sort of things went on in band camp? You don't want to know. Yeah. yeah. A lot of things. What sort of stuff did you Music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was like X Factor. <laughs> it was like X Factor, but punk. That's how I like to describe it. You yeah, you fully became the Pistols. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, it was like three months long, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it was a while. We, did, we do sort of, we each have our respective tutors in the morning, so I go off, I'd learn a bit of bass, Jacob learn a bit of um, drumming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Anton would go with his vocal coach, and then we'd convene and we'd just sort of thrash it out, what we'd learn. Um, and we'd all be a little bit shaky, but it yeah. somehow happened. And, and then, then we and then we'd be told to shut up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, stop, stop. Just yeah. stop. You're getting it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jacob, shut up. It was so much fun. It was a bit like secondary school because, like Louis said, we had different classes throughout yeah, the day. Yeah. So we'd start off on our own, then we'd come together after break, and then and then after lunch we'd go and maybe do a bit of acting. And but yeah. it was you know secondary school, but making Sex Pistols. So that yeah, was pretty cool. Right, it? How was it getting into those real thick British accents? I had a bit of trouble with it. I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> I, it was my first time doing an accent, and I, everyone was sort of getting theirs really well. Like Anson's had his amazingly sort of got us into gear a little bit from, from early on. So I was like, sort of had to step up to the plate a little bit. Um, but it took me, it did take me a while, I'll be honest. But once it happened, it just like unlocked, unlocked the whole thing really for me. But it was fun, I mean, I learned, I learned loads about, mm. about acts. It's just, it's a fascinating world that I really didn't know about. No, what you can yeah. do with your, with your voice, funnily enough. We had so much fun listening to interviews, it's particularly me and Louis, because Sid and John were best oh, mates. Yeah, There's yeah, loads yeah. of interviews of them together. Um, and they both loved to talk back in the day. So oh, yeah, yeah. we, you know, there's so much joking around and of them talking and stuff. And I think just hearing them relax in interviews really helped us to sort of, you know, dive into yeah. it. I mean, did the accent stick? Like, like, do you just walk around your day to day now talking like them? I do a little bit sometimes. Do you? Yeah, I do. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of like it. It's become an alter ego. Yeah, in, in, in a way. There's a lot of swearing throughout this as well. Which character <laughs> do you reckon out of them all like swears the most? Steve. Yeah, Steve. 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 Has to be Steve. Yeah. Yeah. All of us. <laughs> 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 I was about to say all of you said like did it ever feel like it was like oh I say hold on this did we just take it too far? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was always taking it too too far. Yeah. <laughs> I was like okay just one just one in there. <laughs> okay, okay. one. Yeah, <laughs> one a day, one a sentence. And the final one for me, man. This is what we, we kind of want to sum up, right? Is, is if you had to describe the series in three words, each of you, what would they be? Vulva powered revolution. <laughs> That's a perfect answer. I know. I'm gonna come in with that. Goodness, um, Emma. <laughs> oh, just frenetic musical chaos. That was mine. That was my first one. And those that was were your exact name. three words. I mean, no. Okay. But. <laughs> so you guys are psychic. it. <laughs> Go watch it. Oh, nice. it's Go great. watch it. That's amazing. Can we say naughty words or not? Yeah, go for it. Did I actually say this? No, it was, no, it, was, it was Jonesy. It was Jonesy. It was, Jonesy, it was yeah. real Steve Jones. <laughs> What's he saying? Toby. The dog's bollocks. The dog's bollocks. Real, <laughs> real Jonesy. Real Jonesy oh, said nice. that. Oh, right. nice. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, so if he said it, and it's about him, <laughs> yeah. we can say it. <laughs>